Hello. So today I want to share with you all. Um, so concerning the creation of the world, the creation of the universe, the creation of mankind, there are many different theories, many different perspectives, um, many different truths. Um, <laughs> some fully mythological, some have some credibility, um, and I may talk about those in a separate video. Actually, leave in the comments down below if you'd like for me to um, kind of share on the different creation stories um, throughout different mythologies and different philosophies and the different theories on how the world came to be. Um, but for now, what I'd like to do is share my current understanding of how the world was formed. Um, and this all comes from my personal revelation. Yes, I have studied other things, but um, my research doesn't actually drive my mind. <laughs> um, if you know me, you know me. So um, with that being said, let's begin. Um, in the beginning, <laughs> there was God. Um, and in this at this point, I see God as this um, divine awareness, this cloud of God, this um, divine subconscious where there's a lot of energy, but it's all in divine ecstasy. It's in pure divine bliss, ecstatic union with one another, this, uh, this union of divinity that is alive and it's in somewhat of a stasis. It's just enjoying the world within itself and within this uh god cloud right <laughs> exists all the creative faculties necessary to create and there comes a point where this divine subconscious uh well out of the subconscious came conscious um and let's just call the subconscious the father and the consciousness mother. There's this divine masculine and this divine feminine being the first major powers, the true major powers within this divine cloud. That's all still one. And there comes a point where the consciousness mixes with the conscious, where the consciousness mixes with the subconscious, where the masculine mixes with the feminine and there is, at that point, a spark of life, a spark of power, um, an eruption of energy, the first self-created creation, in a sense. And this entity is the sun, the original offspring of God, this singular uh, divine child that carries within it all the faculties of the mother and all the faculties of the father, yet in itself it's its own thing that is also not separate from its parents in any way. They're still one. So this oneness doesn't leave even as the different parts of it begin to gain some form of individuality. Um, and I believe it was at this point that the seven spirits were created, where out of where this triune unity <laughs> of God began to breathe out, and their breath was the seven spirits of God. And I believe it was at this point where the father, the mother, and this original divine child created three different energies. Um, the energy of the spirit, the energy of the soul or the astral, and then the natural energy, which is light or electromagnetism. And I believe at this point, with the help of the seven spirits, they begin to shape and create these three different worlds. The spirit world is formed first, filled with spirits of different sorts and different types. Then following after that became the astral world where all souls are created. This place of fire and illumination of creativity and of wonder. Then came this 
realm that I call the natural world, which includes the universe, the multiverse. It it's it's a large realm that we exist in currently. And it's made out of light, the electromagnetic spectrum itself. Um, some cultures would call these three different cheese. That's fine. It, it fits. Um, so, as I said, I believe that as each of these realms were created, the creatures within those realms were created with them. Um, with the help of by it's I kind of see it as a group a group project between the father the mother this uh, original son and the seven spirits all creating together all playing together because they still have not left their ecstatic bliss their ecstatic union with one another now I believe that there came a point where Elohim, this collective in itself, still considered Elohim, decided to make man, mankind. And I do believe that it started as one. <laughs> and this one was special. Mankind was special. And that it wasn't just formed out of light. But in fact, I believe that mankind is formed out of all three energies, thus giving it body, soul, and spirit as it is fashioned out of the energies of all three realms. Or as Genesis said, the dust of the earth. <laughs> uh, but I believe it, mankind was originally created out of the three substances that all three realms are made out of. And this man, this Adam, this Atum, was created uh, as the image of this triune God, where within it was the fullness. Uh, you could also see this as the first son to ever be manifested and made flesh. Now, as we continue through history, remember that this man, now, I believe that this man was given dominion, not just over the earth, but over the natural world itself. As the father was given dominion over the spirit world, and that became his main realm of function, the mother's main realm of function being the astral and the son's main realm of function, uh being the universe or the natural world itself. And I believe that this created man was given a job, was given a purpose, given an identity to fully represent divinity. Thus, he was given dominion and mastery, not just of the earth, but over the astral and over the spiritual. I believe he was given dominion in all three worlds. But started out exercising his dominion in the natural world. And there came a point where mankind, whether at this point you still want to see it as one individual or... Uh, or just a concept for mankind itself doesn't matter to me but uh, there came a point where mankind forgot <laughs> its unity with God forgot its divine inclusion became ignorant of its unity and at this point you can say that sin entered into the world for this was really the first time where uh Mankind was separate from God, and it was of mankind's own conscious doing. And as time progressed, generations upon generations were brought into a world outside of the, of the knowledge of their true union with God. Eventually, the genetic structure of mankind began to change to match its ideology. And at this point, it needed something natural to save it. Uh, on a genetic level. 
Thus we introduce this figure known as Yeshua, in which Jesus was later created um, out of. <laughs> but uh, we take this figure, Yeshua, who came. I do believe he was a historical figure. I'm not the only one who believes he was a historical figure. And I believe that his mission on earth, not just to be love, which I believe was his prophetic function, but I believe his main mission on the earth was to remind mankind of its true divinity, which it had forgotten. Call them back into their rightful position in the rest of the royal family of God. To reintroduce them to his father and his mother. To remind them of who they really were. And I believe this was, I, I believe Yeshua was a little special. In that he wasn't just a son of God. I believe that he was the original son of God that existed before creation. That took form to rescue Adam. Thus coming as a second Adam in a sense. Bearing all of humanity within himself as the original Adam had. So that as he was uh, allowed himself to be killed and resurrected, he could then somewhat atone and bring all of humanity back into its rightful place. In the same way that Adam represented all of humanity, carried within himself all of humanity, I believe that Yeshua as the second Adam carried humanity in full within himself. Representing not a introduction, but a reminder of something that was eternally true all along. So, I, this is kind of what I believe currently. This is the best way that I can narrate this. Um, and I find this to fit also with the way that Yeshua taught us to pray. Um, I believe this is this pretty much sums up and gives a decent illustration of the message that he taught, which is, is the return home. <laughs> uh, and when I talk about him teaching us to pray, it's like, well, you start in the spirit. You start above and then work your way down. You start within and then work your way out. And I believe that he taught us to pray or create the same way that God creates. He taught us to create like God rather than beg like man. <laughs> um, so just to address a few things, uh, I, I do believe that the seven spirits had a part to play in our creation in the same way that they have a part to play currently in our remembrance and in our repentance. It's the school of the seven by which we relearn who we truly are, that we relearn our divinity. We relearn how to function in divinity and royalty. We learn the things of God from them, making even more sense that they helped create us, that this was a group project. <laughs> So I don't want to ramble on, but uh, leave in the comments down below. Um, would you like for me to do a video deep talking about the different creation stories? Also, leave in the comments down below. What is your current understanding of creation? Um, don't just quote Genesis at me. I, I kind of want you to think and be creative. What do you actually believe? Um, how do you really believe that the world was formed? I'd love to hear some of your entries. Um, as usual, the description down below is where you can find my Patreon, uh, the links to my books, um, the Discord server. For those of you who would like to fellowship with the rest of the community, join us on Discord. <laughs> uh, I recently added a library on there with a bunch of ebooks and audiobooks and things like that. So there's some there's a lot of free stuff on on Discord, but mainly you get a community. Um, so yeah, let's talk in the comments down below. Y'all be blessed.